Hey everyone, Shark here. Uh, as you know, today is patch day, which is super exciting. Uh, patch 1.8 doesn't have a name associated with it. I still, I think we're still under the Onyx Shark uh, kind of banner. But what I wanted to do here is go through the multiplayer balance stuff. I'm going to do kind of a quick summary. So you'll see the notes on the left hand side of the screen here. Um, I'm going to kind of read through, but I'm not going to go line by line. I'm going to talk more about the takeaways from some of these updates. So we'll start here kind of with the general changes. I think the biggest thing that Relic wants is to get rid of the very, very dominant light vehicle meta. Light vehicle should be an option, but it shouldn't be totally punishing for you to play infantry heavy. And it looks like that's what we're going to do here. Relic saying uh, they've increased the fuel cost across the board to make light vehicles and mass light vehicles much more difficult to implement. And you'll see that here in the patch notes as we go through. Um, sandbags, tank trap defense target size has been up up to 20, which makes it easier to destroy field defenses. The recruit team weapon ability, this is from the half tracks, the med trucks, etc. The recharge time increased from 30 to 60. I like this change. It allows you to come through and pick up, uh, you know, decrewed weapons, but not constantly. And so now uh, you have to make a choice between recruiting with uh, a unit and losing some combat power in the process or waiting or trying to tow away with the vehicle to recruit the team weapon. So I like that. Demo charges now do an additional 200% damage to bunkers and da bonus damage uh, to emplacements. I really like this. I think it helps get away from the uh, some of the SimCity stuff, provides players some more options in dealing with not just coastals, but uh, emplacements in general. Um, flamethrowers and vehicle flamethrowers, it says they've fallen out of use. So what they've done here, significant bonus uh, to damage against buildings and bunkers from 175% to plus 250%. Um, interested in my mind, if this does, if they're saying damage against units in buildings or against buildings like the structure itself, right? Because a 250% increase to damage uh, on units in the buildings uh, would be absolutely savage and basically deleted. So I don't think that's what it's saying. I think they're just talking about buildings or structures that are not bunkers. Uh, area effect width has increased. The flamethrower damage uh, on vehicles, the Panzer III and the L6 has been increased. Um, flamethrowers now always penetrate bunkers and buildings. So this is designed to make flamethrowers a little bit better at what they're supposed to do, which is clear garrisons, clear structures, um, and it's reduced the cooldown as well. So I think this is a good change. Uh, I don't think you're going to go back to seeing the flamer blobs that we saw at the beginning of Co3, but, so I think that's a good start. Uh, salvaging, now uh, recovery vehicles, rapid salvage. This is mainly for the DAC. Uh, there are some U.S. units that can use it. Provide 30% of the total Rex manpower cost in addition to the fuel. I think this is going to be even more important um, as we increase the, the fuel cost across the board um, have, and, and the population cost of a lot of these light vehicles and infantry, which you'll see in the patch notes. Having options to kind of get uh, some manpower back from Rex would be really helpful. Next change, all infantry-based rifle weapons now do near penetration of 1.5. Um, super helpful in dealing with vehicles. If you saw in those recent cast, uh, a, a good tactic is to have like a dingo or a half track drive right up on the infantry squad. When you get inside the point blank mechanic, now uh, you do full damage to the squad as if the, the cover is not there. But now you're introducing some counterplay where the infantry get increased uh, chance of penetration of the vehicle's armor. Um, by going up to 1.5 penetration. It's important because with vehicles, target size isn't the determining factor. All the shots will hit. Now it's a matter of whether or not they'll penetrate. Interestingly enough, this means that the Guastatori, which have an armor of 1.5, now in close range, all units will penetrate their armor as well. So the Guastatori are getting a slight nerf here. We'll see when we get down to the DAC notes if that is adjusted. But I actually like that. I don't really like uh, body armor on units, uh, on infantry units in this game. It's not... Uh, historical and it causes some really wonky kind of engagement mechanics that are not intuitive to the user. Pintel mounted machine guns will no longer target aircraft. I love this. Um, if you remember from a cast a while ago, Fergie actually famously wouldn't get pintel mounted machine guns on his Hellcats because that machine gun could fire at something first and eliminate the first strike bonus from the cannon. Same thing, you have units firing at airplanes uh, in the fog of war giving away their position. And with the, the way the anti-air system is currently implemented, the airplanes have too much health, so the Pintle's not bringing them down anyway. Um, the vehicle, turret, anti-tank gun, and Pintle post-fire aim time has been increased to four and standardized. This just means that if a unit leaves 
you're shooting at a unit, it gets away or outside of your sight and then comes back, there's a longer wait time before your unit moves its gun back to back to neutral. I like this. I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it's intuitive behavior, uh, which really is what they're trying to program in, right? If you think about vehicle pathing, it's not the optimal path from a computer's perspective. It's the path that the human user expects the vehicle to take based on the context. Um, snipers have increased in cost from 300 to 340. This is because you can use, lose a lot of models trying to chase a sniper down. Um, I think this is good. We've seen snipers a lot more. You, you want to sit in a spot where snipers are valuable when they're used well and they're a liability if they're used poorly. I also like this because it prevents people from being able to spam snipers, which occasionally you see in team games. The last general change here, this is really interesting. So medium artillery units are having their FAR AOE damage increased by uh, 33% from 0.15 to 0.2. So this essentially means that anything within the FAR AOE of the blast gets additional damage. Is, and the goal here that you know they're saying is like, we want to deal additional splash damage to large masses of infantry. This is going to make some of these on-field howitzers even more effective, in particular, the US uh, Advanced Infantry's M2A1 105, because it's got the free fire, once it gets the charged shells, it does uh, debuffs as well as the damage itself. Um, so, I, you know, you still rarely see these in 1v1s. It's usually more of a meme, but I think team team games, uh, just based on this patch, and, and we'll talk about it in the takeaways at the end, but in general, I think uh, the team games are going to focus much more on artillery and much less on vehicles uh, than they have in the past. All right, now getting into the U.S. forces. So minor change to the air support center. The airstrikes will no longer share cooldowns. This is nice. I'd still like to see some increases, but I, I think they're like ratcheting it in because they don't want to overdo it. Squad, uh, scout squad build time decreased down to 20 seconds. Pathfinders remain at 33. That's just to make it more viable to start with multiple scouts uh, at the start of the game. Engineers are getting a significant buff here. Um, and so... The health is at 100 now for all variants. So engineer health is the same as rifleman health at the start of the game uh, with no veterancy. Accuracy has been reduced uh, pretty considerably um, by about uh, almost 40% at close range. Um, assault engineer accuracy is set slightly higher at close range, but the damage is increased from 3 to 4. Obviously, they, they get that additional penetration. And the burst near modifier has increased by 33% to 1%. So, you know, this is just kind of interesting. So they're, they're going to do uh, less consistent damage, but higher damage when they hit and longer bursts. Um, but I like this for the engineers that a little bit of additional health as everything else in the game has gotten more, uh, more dangerous, more deadly. The engineers just seem to melt. So this should adjust that slightly and allow them to close the distance. I think also this and the changes to the rifleman squad, we may see more strategies that involve pairing like assault engineer builds with the weapons support center, which I think is good. I mean, any anything to allow for like multiple meta approaches uh, is, is interesting for this game. Uh, rifles, slight veterancy increase and slight population increase. Um, this is just to make it so if you have a really rifleman heavy army, it punishes you in terms of manpower in the long run. Um, I would like to see some additional changes to the rifles, but I think in general, this patch is much more uh, wide in scope than I think we thought. And so they probably want to see how this impacts gameplay before they, they get crazy with it. Bazooka teams reduced in cost from 280 to 250 and their steady fire range bonus now functions in garrisons. Both of these are good changes. I understand why uh, they initially increased the manpower cost of the bazooka teams, but I think they went too far, so they're reverting that a little bit, which I like. The uh, M1 anti-tank gun, the focus sight functionality uh, will only give extra vision when the team weapon is set up, but the ability does not cancel when you move the unit, right? And then it gives only a 15 range sight bonus rather than 35. Uh, I like this. If you're in a spot where either you have a lot of units spotting um, or you've got, uh, you know, kind of the exact cone that you want set up for the AT gun. This makes sense. It reduces a little bit of the micro attacks involved in having to constantly re-enable focus site. Um, the uh, M3 half track, some changes here. So first off, fuel costs increased by five. Again, you'll see that kind of across the board. The like the light vehicles, the cost typically goes up by five. It's more of the mediums 
uh, get into like a 10 fuel increase. Uh, significant increase to the HMG arc, which will increase uh, you know overall damage and viability of the half track as a support platform. Um, and then salvage crews from the base half track. Uh, they'll when they salvage a team weapon, they'll destroy it, uh, and then it'll grant 60 munitions and 15 uh, for the team weapons and 15 fuel for Rex. So they're really trying to lean into this this salvage ability, which I like. The quad half track fuel increase from 30 to 40. Uh, this unit still feels worthless to me it does very little anti-air damage uh and it doesn't do any suppression which a lot of times is really what you need it to do um so i, I think this unit still needs some love if they want it to be seen more that said the 75 mil uh half track is getting a, a couple significant buffs in exchange for its increase in fuel cost to 40. um i really like this i think it gives the usf a, a stumble style option um i think you're going to see people Play more with the weapon support center, getting the half track out, right? Uh, barrage reload time reduced, the aim time reduced, the range increased to 90, which is great. So it's basically a, a mortar at this point. Angle scattered uh, increased a little bit. Um, the area of effect distance also increased a little bit. So more scatter, but also more likely to do damage and at a longer range. So you can start to use this to counter some of the, the team weapons uh, that hold you at risk especially stuff like uh, the Coastal Reserve anti-tank bunkers. So I like the changes there. The Greyhound, um, the, fuel po uh, the fuel cost has gone up 10, manpower cost has gone down 20. The population has increased from 6 to 8. So even with uh, the Armored Battle Group's uh, you know, population cost reduction, I think you're going to see um, Greyhounds just kind of slow your income a little bit more. And then what they've tried to do is reduce the AoE damage of the main gun but increase the damage of the 50 cal. So one, you're, you're locking that behind a munitions upgrade. Um, and then two, it's more consistent damage versus chunk damage. My biggest frustration with the Greyhound is I feel felt like sometimes it would just whiff three or four shots and do nothing. And then sometimes it would hit so many in a row, you could just wipe squads very quickly. So this should make its behavior a little bit more consistent combined with the increase in fuel costs. You're, you're less likely to see you know whole Greyhound packs. Uh, similar changes here to the Chaffee, population cost increase, fuel cost increase to 60, a near penetration and APCR near penetration reduction. So now um, you can still penetrate some of the higher end tanks, but you've got to really get in close and it's a little bit more of an RNG role than it used to be. C can destroy now does vehicle detection, no longer grants a, a speed bonus. So I think you'll find the Chaffee is still going to be a viable like light vehicle counter um, I, a guy did this to me in a 1v1 the other day. I was playing as the DAC. I got uh, a half track and a flak filling out. And his first vehicle was a Chaffee. It was actually an excellent counter to what I had um, because you can move around very quick, but it's going to knock out those light vehicles. So it'll still be good in that role, but I think you're less likely to see the packs of Chaffees taking on main battle tanks uh, in an engagement that would be laughable in real life. Uh, the M8 Scott fuel cost increased. Um, and then they fixed the HE barrage. And then they made some, some specific changes to the armored battle group. Looks like they want to uh, increase people using the armored field repairs over the uh, the wrecker. So you're seeing munitions cost reduction there. Seek and destroy now reduces, the speed bonus has been reduced from 35 to 20%, but it gives a plus 10 sight uh, to, to all the vehicles. So um, I like this. It's getting a little bit away from swarming enemy vehicles and more about providing just a boost to overall combat performance and awareness. Uh, and then the strength in steel, um, which uh, is the uh, the pop cap cost reduction from light vehicles, that CP uh, increased from one to two. So I think you're going to see, um, you're going to end up seeing more of the, uh, the rapid production uh, selection there in that battle group. All right, on to the Wehrmacht. Pioneers also getting a pretty substantial uh, health increase to 95. Their weapon near cooldown reduction. So again, they should be better and more survivable point blank. Still as a three-man squad, they are going to be pretty squishy. Uh, Grenadier squad build time decreased by four seconds. Uh, this will help with Grenadier heavy builds. Um, at this point, you'll probably be limited by manpower production. Um, I, in general, I, one of the things that I kind of liked... Um, well, I say like in Code 2, you had the units kind of come from off map, which actually slowed the amount of time for the units to hit the field. 
Um, build time I, I find kind of frustrating in general, but uh, it is what it is as part of a game mechanic. I always feel like I'm, I spend forever building anti-tank guns waiting for them to hit the field to deal with whatever the enemy's light vehicle is. So that's more of a, a me problem or a skill problem than anything else, I guess. Uh, Panzer Grenadier uh, is getting another mid and long range buff. So aim time modifiers reduced, mid accuracy increased, long range accuracy increased. Essentially what they want is for Panzer Grenadiers to be used in cover at range as like a mid to long range counter that can hand, that can fight well in close quarters but um, should lose out to like true SMG weapons. Um, this I think is actually a good, it's good for the Panzer Grenadiers, bad for everyone that like, dislikes fighting against them. Um, because Panzer Grenadiers are so durable, they have such high HP, now when you're engaging at range, again, you have a chance for that damage to be spread out across the squad. Um, so Panzer Grenadiers definitely got a big buff uh, in this patch. I think what they're going to struggle with is finding the role of the Panzer Grenadier versus the role of the Stoss Troop, and because um, they're going to start to to look a lot like each other. All right, the two five one half track for the Wehrmacht. Um, the overall fuel increase and now stumble munition cost increased by ten. Uh, research time increased by fifteen seconds. All that's really designed to do, I think, is just delay the stumble you know, 30 to 60 seconds. It's still a super effective unit. Um, and I think we'll still see this quite a bit, but you probably won't, you'll see it in kind of a support capacity. I also think the Stummel, uh remains a great counter for US infantry heavy builds, especially the Rangers. Um, and that, that 10 fuel in 15 seconds isn't really gonna cost you a whole lot. 221 scout car, slight fuel cost increase to 30. The FLAC 30 anti-aircraft team now does even more damage against aircraft. Again, I'm not, I think the anti-air game is kind of out of whack. Um, the Axis teams have a lot of stuff that does great anti-air, whereas the Allied side does not. Um, and so you basically get these one-sided loiters because uh, the Allies can't knock them out of the sky. Um, but the FLAC-30, if you need uh, anti-air, now it's a uh, fuel-free anti-air platform that you can grab uh, and move, keep behind your lines to protect yourself. The wearable wind fuel cost increased to 70. This makes sense based on everything else being slightly more expensive. The last thing you need is a bunch of wearables hitting the field before you have a chaffee out or an AT gun to counter them. And then the martyr also getting a slight fuel cost increased. Uh, again, just to deal with timing. Stug G is getting some changes. So fuel cost increased to 70, but increased armor from 210 to 250 in the front and increased side armor from 110 to 150. Um, this is supposed to help them deal with flanking maneuvers, a slight rotation rate increase. I'm good with the frontal armor in being increased. Like that makes sense as how the Stug was built. I'm not a big fan of the side armor being increased. The whole point is you have to flank it. So you have to play a maneuver fight, but I think this is good in general. The Stug, uh, Stug G in particular, like has its moments, but it really struggles, uh, in the super fast light vehicle fight. Um, and then it just wasn't worth its cost. So I think increasing the armor, decreasing the the penetration of some of the weapons it's going to see, that that makes sense. Drum bear fuel cost increased by 10. Um, that puts it in line with, with the other vehicle changes. Uh, higher heavy tank. So its AOE radius has increased, but the AOE damage in the center of the AOE has decreased. So the goal here for them is to make the shots more consistent. So there'd be times when the Tiger would shoot at an infantry squad and do no damage, and then times when it would just instantly wipe a squad. Their goal here is to have it do more general damage, more consistent damage, without relying on lucky squad wipes. I think these, especially the Tiger, is still going to be pretty devastating. Uh, and then the Blitzkrieg global speed bonus has been reduced from 35% to 20%. Again, trying to get away from the, the swarming light vehicle meta, um, which makes sense. And then some changes here, specifically to the mechanized battle group, <clears throat> the uh, eight rod armored car. Um, man, I should call it like the off rod instead of the eight rod. Right? Okay, whatever, off rod. Uh, population cost increase, fuel cost significant increase to 55. Accuracy decrease, um, not at close range, but at long range. Uh, so I think you know that makes sense, but CP requirement increase from one to two. I think this is going to combine to really push uh, the Ot Rod kind of out of out of the meta. Still going to be valuable if your opponent is playing very infantry heavy and you need a lot of mobility. It's there for that, but you're a lot less likely to see packs of uh, Ot Rods just punishing infantry 
um, unless things are really, really out of hand. The Stug D uh, gets the armor increases and the rotation rate increases that we talked about. Mobile repair stations, CP cost reduction, which is fine. Uh, those aren't breaking the game. And then mechanized assault, uh, the health regeneration is down from 10 uh, health per second to 3.5. I think this is fair. I think most engineer units heal at 6 per second. Uh, so it would make sense that a crew repairing their vehicle while it is also moving and fighting would not be able to do as much. Really the goal here is to make it so they can only, they might get like one additional hit from an AT gun, but not two or three. Uh, and what they really want you to do with this ability is to use vehicles and infantry together. So your infantry get a bonus, your vehicles stay alive just a little bit longer. Um, and so the, the changes make sense to me. Uh, for the Luftwaffe battle group, um, they say that, hey, the LG-40 recoilless team's HE rounds too ineffective. So they've increased um the radius they've decreased the scatter uh, and they've increased the aoe damage so now lg40 will uh have some ability to counter infantry or at least increase ability to counter infantry i don't think it's going to be the new meta yet but we'll see um the luftwaffe relay is being changed it only requires uh falsch and pioneers um this is, i mean this is a little confusing to me it's available to be built by the falsch and pioneers and pioneer squads at the start of the game um, increase reinforcement radius decrease manpower cost i think this makes sense just in the context of i i didn't see this all that much um, i think it was something that you could use in a really kind of cheeky fashion but most of the games that get played out at the competitive level there's not a lot of room for like experimentation on the side so i think they just want to see uh people use this ability uh, so they're making it a little bit cheaper making it a little bit more accessible and then uh the flak 38 anti-aircraft emplacement uh they changed the veterancy bonuses a little bit um and it takes up the position of the little alpha relay point at one command point okay so they swapped this uh with the little alpha relay uh and increased the range slightly by seven and a half um that's fine uh, I'm worried about encouraging SimCity, but we'll see when we get into the town and coastals here. Um, the bunker overwatch artillery, now three and a half second delay before the first artillery barrage arrives. This is great. Um, I like this change. You would see the uh, ability get called in and immediately that artillery, which already has a huge range, would start deleting your units. So I think this is a good change. Rapid fortification. Um... Is upgrades on the bunker created by rapid fortification smuggler have the upgrades discounted by 50% affected by coastal wall? So I guess. <laughs> cool, the upgrades are discounted by 50%. I, I don't like anything that encourages the SimCity style of gameplay. I think this is going to reduce uh, the munitions cost and allow for use of some other abilities. Um, call the reserves munitions cost decrease from 100 to 90. Yeah, whatever, it, it'll be fine. Um, sorry, I don't know if you guys can tell, I get steamrolled by Coastals all the time, so I'm really hoping that some of these changes will make uh, them a little less toxic to play against, but they still need to be viable, so I understand trying to find the balance. Uh, the artillery officer, or, or the wizard, um, the barrage has received several significant changes to reduce its effectiveness and force the officer to be closer. So now the barrage is canceled when the unit is suppressed, uh, the, the range just decreased by two and a half, but this is actually good because I think most infantry weapons range is 35. So now the artillery officer has to be within small arms range uh, to call, call in this barrage, which is good. Uh, the radius reduced um, by from 15 to 25 to 12 and a half to 20. Um, so I, that's basically the, the size of the circle. And then the, obviously the larger size is when you're, you're vet three. Barrages now require line of sight. Um, I ran into this in a game not too long ago, right? The artillery officer called it in and he was able to stay stationary and leave that circle in place. And things would get barraged without uh, line of sight to the target. So um, this will, will deal with that. And significant delay before the first barrage um, from one and a half to four. So the artillery officer, you're going to have to micro it much better and use it in specific spots to deal with team weapons. And I think what they what they don't want you to be able to do is just run up with an artillery officer and immediately counter an HMG that's suppressing the coastals. So between the delay and canceling on suppression, I think they will have achieved that. All right, now for the Brits. 
the sappers are getting an increase to their SMG near range, so their near range damage profile from 7 to 10, which matches the point blank mechanic, um, and their build time reduced by 5 seconds per unit. They're saying they want to basically extend the range where sappers do full damage. Uh, for some reason, I think Relic is of the mind that sappers are underpowered. Um, I don't know that that's ever really been the case. Even with the TTK changes, I think you know the sappers just had to be clever about getting into, into close range. And um, so you could, yeah, I, I don't really understand why they want to keep buffing the sappers, um, but it's, it'll be all right. Just know that once they get within that point blank range mechanic, they're going to do a lot more damage for an extra three range. So it's basically, you know, a 30% increase um, to their, their damage range there. Uh, the Dingo Light Scout car. So this is interesting. So they've uh, reduced the moving burst from 1 to 0.66. So, you know, 33% reduction in burst length. And they've increased the accuracy while it's moving. I, based on what they're saying, we're like, hey, the dingo does too much damage on the move. This seems kind of counterintuitive to then increase its moving accuracy. I think they just wanted to mitigate the result of the, the nerf to the moving burst reduction. But I like this. It makes the dingo good at doing damage when stationary, but also, but prevent it from being able to chase down, especially other vehicles. Um, some of these engagements, the, the rounds, uh, it's very RNG heavy when you have uh, units pinging each other. Some of the rounds penetrate and some of them don't. So you'll see scenarios where it should be a 50-50, but one unit gets a little bit of luck and just burns down the health of the other one. And then when you try to retreat, you can't get away. So I think they just want to make it slightly easier for other vehicles, in particular the DAC 250, to get away from the Dingo to a spot where it can repair. Um, the Humber, in addition to being slightly more expensive uh, at 35 fuel, now gets a 100% accuracy bonus against snipers. This is because the Brits don't have their own sniper unit. I like this change. You basically made the Humber as your designated uh, sniper hunter unit for the Brits. Gives the Brits some uh, counters to you know the, the Wehrmacht sniper in dealing with them. The CW215 CMP truck, slight fuel cost increased. Um, if you're using it for healing, I think this is painful. Uh, but if you're using it to get a Bofors out, it does achieve the delay. I would have rather seen like an additional munitions cost for the Bofors variant, something along those lines. Um, mobile healing is still super powerful in this game. It is something I kind of want to see people uh, use. Stewart, light tank, 10 fuel cost increase to 45. Makes sense. Uh, Matilda. So it's near AOE damage is lower. So this is similar to what they did to the Tiger and the Black Prince. The near AOE has gone from 1 to 0.75. So at the, at the very center of the area of effect of the damage, 25% damage reduction. This, is, I think, is intended to just keep them, make it so you have more time to react when a Matilda hits the field. It has so much armor, it's so chonky, to keep it from just burning down your infantry very, very quickly. So um, slight damage reduction, but only in the center. Uh, so you should see more consistent and less lucky or unlucky hit, depending on your point of view. Uh, when dealing with Matildas. Grant medium tank population increased to 13. Um, I think this is getting to the right spot. Uh, we can talk for days about how silly it is that the Grant is like the premier tank in the game. Um, but the population cost increase will uh, decrease the chance of you seeing like four Grants swarming across the battlefield. It'll just, it'll hit the manpower income a little bit more. It'll take up more pop cap. Um, so I like the change. The Bofors anti-air emplacement gets additional damage against aircraft. I think this is really the only option that the Allies have for good anti-air, so it might be worth building. Uh, the BL 5.5 artillery piece command, po command point cost reduced from 3 to 2. I think this makes sense. Um, you don't really see too many of these with all the other British artillery abilities and the Bishop, so um, yeah, let's reduce the cost there. Gurkha is getting an SMG damage increase from 4 to 4.5. I think this is specifically with the Thompson upgrade. Um, I have seen Thompson Gurkhas used really well, but it, they are difficult to do. Uh, it's difficult to manage on maps that aren't urban focused. And then now with the TTK changes, they just get burned down, especially by units like Wasatori. So I think this is a good change. The Gurkhas are supposed to be elite infantry for the Brits, so this helps them fit that role. And then for the commandos, you're seeing the SMG near accuracy increased and the mid range cooldown decreased. So uh, near and mid-range commandos will do more damage. Um, it fits kind of their role. You use them like a scalpel. You get in close. 
clear out team weapons. You catch infantry units on retreat. That's what commandos are for. They'll be better at doing that going forward. Uh, and then the Black Prince gets the same changes as the Tiger. Um, so uh, with the change, it gets a boost to its penetration, which I didn't think it had any issues with it, but uh, it is getting a boost to penetration across the board. And then like we talked about with the Tiger, the center and the Matilda, the center of the AOE damage reduced from 1 to 0.6. Um, but the outer part of the AOE increased, so you'll see more consistent damage output. I think the biggest thing I noticed, the difference between the Black Prince and the Tiger, is the Tiger seemed better at dealing with infantry as well as vehicles, where the Black Prince felt like a very large tank destroyer, where occasionally it felt like uh, the AOE radius was so small that infantry could kind of ignore it or keep going about their business, and so that change uh, should get after that. All right, and now we're at the DAC, which had a number of changes. Um, and so despite some of the bonuses that the DAC would get, especially in team games, the DAC has the worst win rate uh, at high level 1v1. So really interested in seeing kind of how they approach here. The mechanized company, the tier three manpower costs decreased from 200 to 180. Uh, it's only 20, but that is helpful considering how manpower constrained DAC is and how much they rely on light vehicles. And with the changes to light vehicles, um, I think the DAC is going to be even more reliant on its infantry and team weapons in this patch. Rapid advance, minor change. The capture bonus doesn't stack with units that can already capture territory. Okay, fine. The, the main thing, rapid advance, you get speed bonuses and you get everything can capture territory, which makes it good late game. Combat half tracks, uh, research time increased by 15 seconds. This is just trying to push uh, the arrival of combat half tracks and 250 slash 9 conversions to the right a little bit. That makes sense. The Crod Schutzen and Kettenkrod now trigger the combined arms bonus. Uh, it's really helpful early on. So you're basically allowing the DAC player to decide, am I trying to cap up the whole map or am I going to fight the combined arms fight and get the benefits associated with that? Panzer Pioneers getting a slice, a slight health increase with even though it's only five, it basically means they can take one more hit from most most weapons or in most engagements. Um, and their veterancy requirements are being decreased. This is going to make the Panzer Pioneers a little bit more viable um, as semi mainline infantry. And given their cost, I think you're going to see more Panzer Pioneers going forward uh, with the grenade launcher, uh, with the flamethrower, etc. So good change if you like using Panzer Pioneers. Uh, Panzer Grenadiers get an aim time multiplier reduction at mid and far range. Um, so this is designed to make them more effective at range um, so that they don't have to close the distance and can do more damage. Um, I like this change for them. I think this makes sense in the grand scheme of things. If DAC were really reliant on vehicles and vehicles are less viable overall, then you need to give them a situation where their infantry can can survive. And so I think now DAC Panzer Grenadiers, um, you got to fight with them at range. They'll do more damage, but that's the only way to make sure that you don't bleed manpower unnecessarily. Uh, Krod shoots in cost reduction to 180 manpower. So now it's cheaper than the Jeep. The moving cooldown reduced from 1.5 to 1. So it still can't reverse, um, but the moving cooldown has allowed it just to be a little bit better at chasing and manpower cost reduction, so it's not as damaging uh, when it does eventually die. The 250, that basically the half track, uh, similar changes to the Dingo. So increase to the moving cooldown from uh, 0.25 to 1. So it's not going to be as good at chasing. Um, Moving accuracy increased back to 0.725. So I think I'm just I wonder why they're making uh, these changes. Why they're increasing the accuracy while moving, but then decreasing the um, basically the rate of fire while moving is to find some sort of middle ground, I suppose. And then again, a 15 second increase to the research time for the 20 mil auto cannon upgrade. Um, which makes sense. You're just trying to move all the timings to the right to allow more time for infantry play. Assault Grenadiers got some major, basically, buffs. So the Assault Disembark speed bonus lasts an additional five seconds. The grenade wind down and wind up times have been reduced, so the grenade throws will happen quicker. The angle scatter has been reduced, so the grenades are more likely to land uh, where you aim them. The far damage, so basically the radius, or the damage done at the max radius of the grenades has been increased. Um, scatter ratio decrease for more accuracy. The damage of each one of the grenades has gone from 40 to 70. Basically, uh, hey, if you see assault grenadiers lining up for their, their assault grenade throw, you need to get out of there. These grenades are going to absolutely shred people and team weapons. Um, 
and and so this is assault grenadiers are going to be much more viable i think going forward into this patch and then they basically made a change if you use the battlefield espionage battle group and you you allow your assault grenadiers to plunder scg 44s it'll basically be a straight buff across the board at mid and long range over the mp40 um, they've nerfed the uh, med truck field supplies uh, combat bonuses from 20% to 10%. I think this is fine. Uh, I think it's relatively rare to see these uh, in combat. So <clears throat> a, a slight reduction. I think this will just kind of help balance out team games. The LEIG support gun has been nerfed kind of across the board. So slower rate of fire, increased aim time, uh, the barrage reload time, and then increase auto fire reload time. Uh, this is just to bring it more in line with the pack howitzer, considering that the DAC almost always have access to it. Um, I think this is good. The LEIG had been kind of, uh, it was definitely a meta weapon. So now uh, it's going to encourage people to actually barrage with it rather than just let it hang out in the back uh, and have it do the work for you. 8 rod, similar changes to the Wehrmacht. Population increased from 7 to 8. Uh, accuracy decrease at mid and long range. Fuel cost increased to 55. Again, you're going to see a lot less. I think mainly this has made the tier three uh, build less viable for uh, for the DAC. Um, yeah, you get the benefit of it, benefit of if you keep your uh, eight rods alive, they won't bleed manpower. But now it's just that much more fuel uh, to get a couple of these to hunt down infantry. And now you're also basically you're delaying your tech into the Panzer threes uh, and tier four, which are already just not as good. Uh, as most of the late game allied armor the martyr 3 tank destroyer uh the fuel cost is up, up gone up to 35 but the manpower has come down significantly as well as the rotation rate has increased i really like this this makes martyrs more viable in the late game so now your dac late game can look something like you know a tiger or a panzer 4 up in front and a couple of cheaper martyrs because at this point fuel isn't really the issue it's manpower so a couple of martyrs in the back to provide a counter um to some of these allied tank swarms the easy eights the grants that you see kind of the end of the game especially end of team games so i like these changes to the martyr uh they made some significant changes to the recontractor obviously the fuel cost has increased to 35 but now the radi the recon goes up to 125 range so you can keep it a little bit safer and it'll hold the position to detect the enemies for an additional two seconds so as far as a recon tool and detecting through the fog of war this is much more viable um, something that you should think about building more often. It gives you a lot of options, especially in team games. The flag filling, uh, fuel costs increased to 50, but most importantly, can no longer suppress while moving. I'm kind of caught uh, in a dilemma with this because when you play as the DAC, you see just how important the flag filling is at countering uh, allied infantry, which is almost always outnumbering the DAC infantry. But at the same time, it's super tilting when you are playing against it. It just constantly moves around and suppresses. I think as a general rule, um, these vehicles shouldn't suppress while they're moving. I would like to see suppression added to the uh, the U.S. quad mount half track, also while stationary, as kind of an uh, you know like a standardization. The Stug D and Stug G, uh, same changes as, as with the Wehrmacht. So increased frontal armor, increased side armor, increased rotation rate, fuel increased cost for the Stug Three uh, D assault gun. Um, yeah, it makes sense. The, the Stug Gs for the DAC only show up uh, with the Armored Reserves Battle Group call-in. Um, so it makes sense that their, their costs wouldn't change. They're a very like, niche decision at that point. I've only used them a couple of times um, when you need like long-range anti-armor. And now with these changes to the Martyr, I think the Martyr is going to be more viable for that. Uh, similar changes for the Tiger as with Wehrmacht and the Black Prince. So area effect radius increased. Damage at the mid and far AOE uh, increased, but damage reduced at the near range uh, AOE. All right, now this is something I talked about it before when we talked about the uh, the armor penetration mechanics. Uh, Guastatori still going to be super overpowered. So they've reduced their, their armor from one and a half to one, but now they just get a static 75% damage reduction. Uh, which is absolutely wild. So now like the knife throw from the SSF Commandos, as an example, will only do 75 damage instead of 100. Um, yeah, I, I don't like this. They don't need to be more resistant to vehicles. You need to have a counter for this unit. Uh, they already do a ton of damage. They shoot flamers on the move. Um, yeah, I, 
you know, Tightrope's music video notwithstanding, uh, I think the Glossatory need a little bit of additional love. Um, all right, the Caro light tanks increased in fuel costs. The L640 light tanks fuel costs increased as well. And then the 250 slash 3 Funk Panzerwagen, um, it now can transport infantry and tow heavy team weapons. I like this. That's fine, right? There is no reason it shouldn't have been able to do that in the first place. Um, so now you can use it as a regular half track and then cloak your infantry when you get there. Or combine it with the assault grenadiers uh, and have them be cloaked and sprinting. You know, that won't be overpowered for anyone. Um, so, but pretty cool. More options for them. Uh, and then really the only change is the battle group, armored support, vehicle awareness now no longer costs munitions, but has a three minute cooldown and doesn't require vehicles to be stationary. I think this is good. You'll see it used again. Um, so you can trigger it when you're about ready to, you want to make a big push, you trigger vehicle awareness. It helps you identify where the enemy's vehicles are. It's uh, consistent with the factions, emphasis on reconnaissance. So makes sense to me. Uh, Flam Panzer III, the price manpower cost dropped significantly, but the fuel cost increased. Um, again, makes sense. It will prevent it from hitting the field too early, but reflect its viability. And then Panzer Storm, like with everything else, the speed bonus from 35 to 20%. The most broken part of Panzer Storm is the fact that you can run over mines and not take a crit. Um, and that hasn't been adjusted. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go grab my buddy Fred and we're going to talk a little bit about the changes and uh, and that'll wrap this one up. All right, so I'm back here. I grabbed my buddy Fred for his expert analysis. And so Fred, they said the intent of the, <laughs> they said the intent of this patch was to reduce light vehicle spam. Have they been successful? Yes. I think so. Yes, they increased overall the fuel. So they should come later. So in the early game, we're going to see a little bit more room for infantry play. And then they also increased um, like a lot of the pop cap. They were aiming for like one or two light vehicles instead of like the five or six we're seeing now mm -hmm. in the meta. So I think overall they succeeded with that, seeing the patch notes. Yeah. I, and so I think because you brought this up as well, um, what you have is in theory like a longer amount of time where infantry play is more viable before you start to see vehicles on the field i am concerned yeah. I, I like the pop cap increase right because it makes it really hard for people to sustain like loads of these the swarms of these light vehicles i think the downside is they haven't changed the tech timing at all so in reality what i think they've done is made it more tempting to skip from infantry to tanks and to skip that mid-tier entirely Right. Like, why would you pay, you know, for two eight rods that are 55 fuel each when by the time you're done with them, you could just get tier four and get a Panzer three out two minutes later with the fuel. You know what I mean? Because they haven't changed the timing yeah. of the tiers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see where you're going. I feel like this was before the TTK upgrade. You saw this a lot where people just skipped the light vehicles mm. for some for some factions at least yeah uh but yeah i think so as well it, it could right, be but right. i don't think so because you still need like like maybe one to especially if you play like the uh, like the usf mm -hmm. you just want uh you kind of want the greyhound in that in between space before going uh yeah yeah before or, going or to the tier four or the chaffee Right. And yeah, so I think one, like, one the... yeah, light vehicles are going to be like a luxury now, you know, like, hey, we're, we've been up on fuel. We're going to try to use light vehicles to kind of like secure our victory um, rather than yeah, you, you're required to play yeah. with them. Yeah. You kind of want to like uh, extend your early aggression with your mm -hmm. light vehicles instead of use only light vehicles to establish dominance. Yeah. I, you know, and I kind of wonder, I think the biggest faction that's going to be affected by this is the DAC, right? Because they needed, you need light vehicles as DAC to save on manpower, to get the armory upgrades, to eventually kind of snowball into decent late game units. And the DAC had already been doing um, the worst among all the factions in, in high level 1v1s. Now they're great in team yeah. games, right? With the, the Flak 36 and the LEIG and the Walking Stuka and the Tiger... Right, they have a lot of things that, that they get all the time that are really helpful in team games, but in 1v1, I felt like they struggled. And so you saw a lot of significant infantry buffs to the DAC along the way. 
um panzer pioneers better long range damage and health panzer grenadiers yeah. better long range damage assault grenadiers as well yep assault grenadiers significant buff to their dismount ability and to their grenade ability um and so i guess what i appreciate about this is like i feel like relic is trying to help dac play into the historical role or theme that they've chosen so heavy focus on reconnaissance heavy focus on mechanized play like now you can kind of see it where you've got panzer pioneers and panzer grenadiers like holding the line and then a half track comes in with assault grenadiers to kind of spearhead the push and then you you exploit it with a couple of light vehicles as infantry kind of follow on like in theory it sounds really good i just wonder uh if they're going to continue to struggle with manpower bleed um against some of these when you're when you're saying like oh well the allied factions let's just extend infantry play uh the rifles and infantry sections are still really viable um if that doesn't ultimately lead to a decrease in overall DAC win rate well i feel like as well with the like the ultralights they kind of nerfed at least the dingo they nerfed a bit mm -hmm. and they increased penetration for our rifle squads mm -hmm. like all squads using rifles yeah I f that's also a benefit for the deck with their Panzer Grenadiers and the Pioneers as well. Yeah. So, like early game against the, the Brits, they shouldn't be pushed off by a Dingo, which yeah. can just come close, <laughs> come closer to in range where it doesn't uh, benefit or from cover anymore, where you don't you don't benefit from cover anymore. So, yeah. Overall, that should be changed as well. Also, the crat shoots and uh, now giving uh, combined arms is also a very big buff, mm -hmm. I feel, to yeah. playing with Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, for sure. Um, the last thing, I wanted to know what you thought about this. I was actually kind of irritated, right? Because I saw the near-range rifle penetration increase to 1.5. And as you know, Guastatori have one point, or at least before this patch, had 1.5 armor, which is basically yeah. like a solid 33% damage reduction to small arms fire incoming. Now, that armor has been taken away, which I don't think they should have. I thought this was great. Like, hey, if Guasatori closed to short range with you, now their armor means nothing because your penetration has increased. Instead, they took that armor away and just added a flat 25% damage reduction for Guasatori. Yeah, for oh. all sources. I was, I was Why? thinking about just this. Yeah, I was... <laughs> I was exactly the same. I was like, how is this going to work? Because now they're, they will receive less damage from artillery, from like from everything. They're, they're, they're going to be very bulky now. Yeah. I feel and, like. And I don't want to sound like an asshole, but the last time Italian infantry were just better than everybody else was 400 BC. Like, <laughs> what is going on? You're going to have Glossatory out DPSing Rangers, SAS Commandos. Fuck, we'll have to try with Panzer Grenadiers, too. They'll just run them all down. It doesn't matter. Glossatory for the win. Uh, I cue in Tightrope's Glossatory music video. Who you going to call, <laughs> nice. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, who are you going to call? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, all right. Oh, my, my rant's one, complete on that. Yeah. Uh, nice. One highlight, I think. Or well highlight a good improvement is the for the the tigers and the black prince mm -hmm. yeah that they adjusted their their scatter and their damage uh, profile because now you had like it was or a total miss or it instantly wiped an at gun <laughs> and now it's it's more it's it is less rng yes. so i think that's a good change yeah i think and the also the the stooks and also the stooks as well i think the armor increases and the rotation rates on the stooks i i wish they hadn't done the side armor increase on the stug right the front makes sense but the side armor is supposed to be kind of thin you're supposed to try to flank it um yeah, fine with the rotation true. rate increase the uh i think in general what you're seeing is they're trying to um without making this starcraft right they're trying okay. to make the damage profiles for vehicles more consistent because the most frustrating yeah. thing is when you've got supremacy you've got two greyhounds you've got two eight rods and you're targeting an infantry squad and they just whiff over and over again and do no damage or the times when you have one and it hits two shots in a row and just wipes the squad and the, your opponent's sitting there like what the hell right and so i think they yeah. they're focusing more on stuff like auto cannons on the use of uh hull machine guns to do more consistent damage uh and yeah. then and then make the even the scatter damage for some of these rounds more consistent 
Um, so you know, you just, it's more intuitive. You know what's going to happen. You see a vehicle yeah. do this thing. Less RNG like, indeed, like in, in Code 2, it was a lot of things were really RNG like. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they're trying to make Code 3 really more consistent and, and, and readable. Yeah. And I think for the infantry play, that makes sense. The RNG, when it comes to like armor penetration for vehicles, that remains. I think that's really good. And they shouldn't get away from that because that's what makes this game exciting. Right. Um, yeah. The last thing, and it was mentioned early on, I think a lot of people are going to sleep on it. Artillery got a far AOE damage buff. And it doesn't look like yeah. much because it's 0.15 to 0.2, but that's a solid 33% damage increase on the outside of the AOE. I think team games are going to get nuts with these howitzers. Yes. I think so as well, because like they they also nerfed the LEIG a bit. Mm-hmm. And like uh, also the artillery officer got a slight nerf as well, especially for like the radius and the the delay. But yeah, indeed, the, the, these had <laughs> this. Well, we we cast it like a game, like a game where there was a lot of RT, which was already <laughs> up- impressive. Yeah. <laughs> but now in like four v four, three v three team games, oh man. Yeah. Or if you if you're lucky enough to build a howitzer in a one v one and start doing base bombardments, it's going to be that much more deadly. Um, yeah. Which. Maybe I'm just bad at the game. It feels like that happens to me a lot. So, <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't seen it much. It feels like you should have counted them before yeah. they. Yeah, probably a skill weren't. issue, right? <laughs> probably. Right. Cool. And did you have any other takeaways from this patch? Um, I don't think so. All right. Well, now there's only one thing left to do, and Pop that's on into game, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's get in the game and try it out. <laughs> So I'm yeah, gonna nice. um, I'm gonna publish this real quick. Fred, thanks for hopping on, uh, and then we'll have to go play a little bit to see if we know what's happening. Yeah, nice. All right. Thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. Hope this was helpful, uh, and catch y'all in the next one.